Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen. Today, we're going to take a look at a case study from one of my clients. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple and case study one, using simple diagrams. In this case study, we're just going to take a look at a project, a Six Sigma project, uh, that essentially was solved just using the simplest pictures, the simplest basic statistical diagrams. So let's get into this thing. Here's the process. It's a gas hearth and you can just see, look here, there's a piece of flat glass just sitting there waiting to be processed through this hearth. And essentially it's going to be heated up. There's a couple of burners here. It's going to be heated up and it's going to be bent into a shape. So it's a very simple, it's a very simple thing that we're, we're trying to do. But like most simple things, of course, it has a tolerance and we'll have a look at the tolerance a little bit later. Here's the shape that's going to be created. So here's the piece of glass once it's been uh, through that particular step. You can see the, the way that it's been uh, bent into shape and eventually some sides are put on there. And I think that is filled with a resin as well to make a, a lens of some kind. The problem, however, is currently, look, wow, we're up at a 20% reject rate. There's the last kind of 20 times we've run the process and the process is just sitting fabulously up at sort of 20%. So not a great, not a great current performance. And by the way, just something I'll point out, they've had this for two years. So when you see how easy this is to fix, bear in mind, They've had this for two years and they've not been able to fix it just by looking at the data or the numbers or just by looking at the process. Standard approach that I teach to all my clients. First of all, let's have a look at the process flow diagram. Of course, we're going to use the process flow diagram to say, well, what are the variables that I should be controlling? at each of the stages. What are the variables? What are the variables? What are the variables? Is the process is the process under control? Here's the cause and effect diagram. So again, what's on the cause and effect diagram? Well, all the variables that they've just discovered using the flow. And then we take that into a planning document and all the red here all the variables are down here. All the red is telling me none of those variables are actually in control. So if we have a green box with a C in it, that would be telling me, are we in control? Currently, there is only three out of 42 variables actually in control. Not a great place to be. Let's take a look at the current defect rate. So here's the Pareto look. So you can see that um, there's a dimension identified as measure one in this case. 60% if you look across here. 60 odd percent of all the defects are coming from there. And then measure two. Nearly 80% of all the defects are coming from there. To be honest, parallel, of course, is also a measure. And it might also be part of the problem uh, with this dimension over here, to be fair. But uh, we'll, we'll, see how this, um, we'll see how this pans out anyway. So, so the dimensional size is clearly a bigger, the biggest part of the problem. And then here's the simple diagram that they used. Now, this is known as a multivariate chart. Uh, this is showing you the pattern as the process warms up. So you can see that as the hearth warms up, this is the first 20 units off the hearth. The spec, by the way, this is the top limit. Here down at 12, that's actually mid limit. It's not the bottom tolerance, it's mid limit. So if you just look at this diagram, Clearly, there's all of this part of the tolerance down here not being used. We are starting too big. 
and then eventually the parts drift in. But every time they start the process up from cold, they are going to get those defects. Now the multivari chart, of course, what it's doing is it's taking samples and we're plotting the maximum, the minimum, and the average. So as they've done a warm-up routine, what they're showing you is a series of warm-up routines, and this is the typical, this is the typical trend, the way that it drifts into tolerance. Okay, but you can clearly see. So for every break, for every break, for every stoppage, for every lunch time they have, they're going to get this trend for the first 20. And if they stop for any reason uh, to go and get more glass or for anything, the process starts to cool down, then these results are going back up here. The multivari chart is showing you that pattern. Of course, if you look at it from a CPK perspective, we're well up on top tolerance. Process is drifting in as the, as the process warms up. Uh, but of course, by that time, too late. We've made defects out here, but clearly sitting all high in the process. Now, once the engineer looked at this, the person running the project, he said, well, this is easy. I just have to set the starting point lower. So it starts at top tolerance inside and then drifts to mid. That's an easy thing to do. Previous diagram. You're clearly going to get results in the top and then you're going to sit on the mid later. Personally, I might have just brought that down a little bit lower uh, and then that would make the distribution sit more centrally. But to be fair, that's going to solve the problem. They don't really need to go and do anything much cleverer than that. Let's look at the results. Look at the defect rate. Wow. We were sitting up there, as he's saying, between 15, 15 and 23%, uh, sitting nice and regularly at 15, 23%, sorted that problem out, bang, we're down here, 3 to 0.7%. That's probably those other defects on the Pareto diagram. They're going to need sorting out at some point. But when the guy presented this, he said to me, is that it? Is it that easy? I said, yes, of course it's that easy. It's supposed to be easy. That's what Six Sigma does. It makes problem solving easy. But this problem had existed for two years. That pattern existed for two years and nobody had ever noticed it. It took them literally two weeks to fix once they drew the right diagram. And it makes a great point in Six Sigma, which is that I never, I never want you to look at numbers. I typically want you to draw pictures, draw a picture of what's going on, draw a picture from the data, because the picture will take you into a much deeper understanding of what's going on. The idea of the pictures is to see patterns in the data. You cannot visualize patterns by looking at numbers. It just isn't possible. So guys, these tools, they are very, very simple, but they are very, very powerful. Just because they are simple doesn't mean that you, if you don't use them, you'll still see the pattern. You won't. Use simple diagrams, make problem solving easy. Well, hope you found that useful. Uh, if you've got any questions on that particular topic, or indeed anything that you're doing in Six Sigma that you need some help with, drop me a line. Hope to hear from you soon. Subscribe or drop me an email and I hope to hear from you soon.